All right, so we've had a really full morning. We've shown you lots of new products, lots of new technology. We've had flying darts, robots, and we've had lightning. And we've seen how LabVIEW has made all of this possible. But I know some of you are sitting out there and, and you're wondering, I mean, John, don't we need to talk about a new version of LabVIEW? Well, it's time. This morning, we're pleased to introduce the latest version of LabVIEW, LabVIEW 2010. This morning, you've already seen a handful of new features, including NI TimeSync, NI SoftMotion, and the integration of Xilinx FPGA IP. But trust me, there is a lot more, much, much more to LabVIEW 2010. A lot of the features of LabVIEW have always been focused about helping you reduce your development time. But this year, for LabVIEW, we put a renewed focus on another aspect of time, and that's runtime. Runtime execution is another area where we believe our software-based approach has delivered significant benefits by being able to leverage the computational and rapid computational advancements. To talk about some of the new features in LabVIEW 2010, please welcome members of the LabVIEW R&D team. So Chris, let's start it off. What is LabVIEW 2010 all about? LabVIEW 2010 is all about time. In addition to the typical feature in a new version designed to help you develop code faster or easier, LabVIEW 2010 will flat out make your code run faster. So, you know, obviously everyone in this audience is excited about that. So you're telling us that we can just take our existing code, open it in LabVIEW 2010, and it's automatically going to run faster? Well, don't take our word for it, John. Let's just show you. Here, we're using some standard LabVIEW primitives to multiply and add to a large array. I'm going to run this exact same code in LabVIEW 2009 and in LabVIEW 2010. As you can see, we get a staggering 3.5x improvement. Right. This shows how computationally bound code runs faster in LabVIEW 2010, and that means you get to leave work early and just go home. <laughs> <laughs> This graph shows the performance speed up of several applications in our test suites. You can see that there's a wide spectrum of how code can be affected by compiler optimizations. Obviously, the speed up you'll see in your applications will depend on what your code is doing. Compiler optimizations can affect operations such as DLL calls or UI calls or I.O. bound applications. While portions of your LabVIEW code may speed up more, our benchmarks have shown that your overall application should see a runtime improvement up to around 20%. Well, that sounds impressive. I think this audience in the LabVIEW community is always interested in higher performance of their code. Can you guys tell us a little about how you made this possible? The compiler was one of the primary focuses of the 2010 release of LabVIEW. Although we've continuously innovated in the compiler with enhancements such as emplaceness and clumping, we wanted to provide a compiler that could optimize the LabVIEW code you write for runtime performance, regardless of how well optimized the G code is written. This slide shows the compile chain in LabVIEW 8.6. LabVIEW 2009 introduced Defer, a high-level intermediate representation that is graphical in nature and preserves LabVIEW execution semantics such as parallelism and data flow. LabVIEW 2010 introduces a second intermediate representation using LLVM. LLVM is a high-performance, open-source compiler infrastructure that is widely used in both academia and industry. It's been used at companies such as Apple, Adobe, and Google, for example. LLVM uses a very low-level intermediate representation and possesses knowledge of target machine characteristics such as SSE instructions. The details of the implementation are a little too in-depth to go into here. Essentially, we can make a whole host of new optimizations to your code, both standard and custom, in both LLVM and Deeper that we couldn't make before. Consider the example of applying a singular value decomposition. While the typical SVD calculation outputs three matrices, our application requires only one. Since these matrices can be quite large, Calculating two unnecessary ones is costly in both execution time and memory consumption. The optimized compiler in LabVIEW 2010 can detect that these two outputs are unwired and remove the unnecessary parts of the calculation. Sean is running our code in LabVIEW 2009 now. This optimization in LabVIEW 2010 results in code that is almost 90 times faster. The bottom line is that LabVIEW 2010 makes your code run faster. All right, well, that's very impressive, guys, to see the runtime enhancements in LabVIEW 2010. But as I mentioned, there's a lot of features that will help you program faster. Wes, what do you have to tell us about? 
the LabVIEW Idea Exchange. So LabVIEW 2010 is the first version to include ideas from the LabVIEW Idea Exchange, our online forum for collecting customers' product suggestions. Now many of the feature ideas our uh, customers have submitted focused on saving developers time as they develop some of the really cool applications sort of like the ones we've seen today. We've received already over 1,000 feature ideas and these ideas have received over 25,000 votes and counting. What our team did was we focused on the highest voted ideas and in the last year we implemented 14 user submitted features. So Wes, I'm thinking you've got a pretty good gig in R&D. I mean, you get to stand up here and take credit for the ideas submitted by our users. Yeah, it kind of is. <laughs> but seriously, <laughs> by bringing our users into our development process, we're able to more, uh, uh, more comfortably sort of feel like we're delivering the exact features that our users uh, really want. So what type of features are we talking about? Well, two of the most popular ideas were to redesign the appearance of the Boolean constant and local variable to improve diagram readability. So not only does it save diagram space, but you can see how, for example, an array of Boolean constants is now much easier to read. Another great idea is uh, labels on wires. Before you could put a comment next to a label or next to a wire, but you'd have to move the comment every time you move your wire. Now you can attach a label directly to a wire, making your code more readable and keeping your fingers <laughs> off of the screen. It does feel good. Yeah, it feels really good. All right, now you guys know I'm the expert LabVIEW programmer, and looking at your code here, I'm hoping you're going to show a feature to take uh, care of that ridiculous cluster constant. Yeah. Yeah, as you point out, John, uh, clusters can take up a lot of diagram space. Fortunately, now you can represent your cluster constants as icons, making your diagram easier to read. And along those same lines, LabVIEW has a new merge error node allows you to merge as many air wires as you need. It's a cleaner solution than in previous version, and it's faster performing as well. And, uh, <laughs> and you remember quick drop, right, John? Yes. So this year we're adding replace functionality to quick drop. That means you can select a node and replace it quickly without right clicks or pallets. And replace is just one of the new quick drop actions invocable by a customizable keyboard shortcut. And you can even add your own actions since it's built on a plug-in interface. Well, guys, it sounds like an impressive set of new features. Do we have time for just one? Travis. Cool, because now you can control click to easily rewire terminal connections on the connector pane. You can export data to Excel from graphs, arrays, and tables. You can display a radix on strings. OK, you OK, Travis, I get it. Uh, Wes, guys, it's great to see your excitement about all these new features, and especially to see how the community is helping in the development and identification of those new features. Can you guys just tell us briefly, what are you working on next? Well, I mean, right now, Travis and his team are already working on more great user-submitted features for next year's release. And if you in the audience have a feature you'd like to see in LabVIEW, or if you'd just like to vote on those submitted by other LabVIEW users, please go to ni.com slash ideas. All right, well, Wes, Travis, Chris, John, thank you for showing us just a few of the many features in LabVIEW 2010. Thanks, guys. Thanks.